don't have any good jokes today. No good jokes today. All right. You know the one about the golfer, why they always have an extra pair of socks? In case they get a hole in one. All right. So uh, let me let me give you an overview of what's going to happen in this unit. Just go to the bottom of this page real quick. It, it summarizes it summarizes what we're going to focus on. Triangles first. We're going to stick with triangles. Then we're going to stick with quadrilaterals. I call them quads, right? Four-sided. And then we're going to do polygons, which is like many-sided. So that's your hexagon, your heptagon, your decagon, all those gons, right? And, and then, uh, so that, so we're basically dealing with shapes, angles, sides, and so forth, okay? All right, so I'm trying to, I'm going to try to, like, a lot of this, I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of this is going to be review, but please don't fall asleep, because there's some nuances that I'm going to uh, bring to your attention, because you, if you pay attention, even on the exam, you can score easy marks and save a ton of time to spend it on other questions that require more of your time, right? So here you go, page two, right? I'm just gonna have my original here just in case I miss anything. So um, I'm gonna review some previous skills. Um, symmetry, what is symmetry? When something is symmetric, it means that you can cut it in half and you have exactly two same halves. That's what symmetry, symmetry is. So an isosceles, as well as equilateral triangle, can be split in half because they are symmetric. That means, because a lot of students think that whenever you cut a, a triangle, you just split whatever is in the middle in half. It's like, no, 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 it's not always that simple. Okay, so for example, watch this one. I want you to read your diagrams, okay? Do you see that this is 50 and that's 50? Yes, Mr. Erickson. Okay, so that means we can use symbols like this. The markings, like these tell us that these two sides are the same. Watch one more thing. The angles across, I can guarantee you, I can put $100 down or more if you want, uh, that the angles across the two sides will also be the same. The angles at those bases are also the same. So this is an isosceles triangle, okay? It's important. So you know you can cut it in half. Use a different color for this part, will you? Um, so this 70 here that is up top, guess what? When If you were to cut it down the height here, down the center, you can just divide that in half and you just get 35 degrees. Okay. And then the 50 centimeters obviously stays the same. And that 80 over here, can you split that in half? Yes, you can because it's symmetric. So don't make the assumption unless you know for sure that what you're splitting is symmetric. Okay, so in this case, you can divide in half and voila, you have your new triangle there. That's it for now. Next. What kind of a triangle is this? All sides are 100. Do you see that? That's an equilateral triangle. So you can go ahead with your pencil or whatever you have, and you can make those markings, right? You're saying that all three sides are the same immediately. Sorry. Equilateral triangle. Okay. Immediately, all sides are the same. So how, how does that help us? What do we know about an equilateral triangle? All angles are the same. So if you split 180 degrees into three equal parts, you get 60 degree angles everywhere. So this is 60, this is 60, this is 60. So a lot of these things are gonna be review, 
we take it as like, yay, it's going to be easier, right? So we go over here. We're already doing the lesson, guys. Can't wait forever. 30, 60. Okay. This is 60, this stays. What would this one be, by the way? It's a, it's a 90, right? You can you can look at, you know, this is 90 already, so this has to be 90, or you just, if this is the height, for sure you have a 90 there. Okay, I can also, let's go up here. If you're splitting something, we're splitting it at the height, right? So there's a 90. Do you have these booklets? You should have. Yeah, geometry, page two. Exactly, yeah. And we'll do more of that. Right now, I just want to introduce you to... Okay. Oh, I forgot something here. Let's transfer the 100. Okay. And this in half, that's 50, right? So we could split this in half, we could split that in half and uh, come up with our new triangle, okay? If you need the booklets up here, the green one. Next, if it's not stapled, yeah, I don't know what happens. Just grab one underneath it. All right. Look at this triangle here. All sides have a different measure. So I want you to have different markings. So that would be a one-liner like that. This would be two, and this long side would be marked with three. So we're, I, I need you to understand that whether there are actual measurements or markings, they both say the same thing, and we're focusing on the fact that they're all different, okay? So can I just tell you something? If, the all, if all sides are different on that triangle, all angles will be different as well. Did, you, did your teachers ever talk about that relationship? I hope so. So if this is a one like this, you actually go two here and one, two, three there, three arches like that, okay? And so that indicates to us that, hey, all angles are different as well. Not symmetric. Do you know what kind of triangle this is if all sides are different? What's the name? Scalene. You just remember that? Pretty good. Scalene, yes. Uh, not symmetric. That's the one that's not symmetric. Okay. So why is there an X here on the side? Uh, what I'm trying to say is you can just say, hey, there's 100 here. I'm just going to split it in half and just make this 50. Not true. This is not true. That's wrong, right? You can't do that. You can you can also not take the hundred down here, split it in half, and just say this is fifty centimeters. This is wrong as well. Okay, can't say that. So basically, in this case, you are you're not able to do this trick where you cut in half because it's asymmetric. It's not symmetric. I think we're good here. We keep going. Page three. For each of the following triangles. Um, 
Fill in the triangle to the right with as much information as possible. I need you to be able to do that uh, and I emphasis on as much as possible. Okay. So look at what you know here. I'm going to highlight the things that I know. I know that sometimes you'll feel like you're stuck and you don't have anything to go off of. But these two actually tell you that those sides are the same. And by the same token, you're following this, if these two sides are the same, then it, it stands to reason that the angles across those two are also the same. Okay. This is an isosceles triangle. Two sides are the same. Therefore, the base angles that are across them are also the same. Can I do that here? I'm going to go dash. It's, it's, it has to do with if the sides are the same, then those angles across them are the same as well. That's really why that is. Okay. Can I split this thing? Can I split an, a symmetric? Yes. This is symmetric, which means I can split it. Do you see that box up here? What does that indicate? That is a 90 degree angle right there. So I can take that and divide it in half and just say this is 45. This down here is a 90. And what is this going to be over here? 45 as well. I use the sum of triangles being 180 to help me out there. This is as much as I can do. Let's put the H here. Right? The height comes with us. We started off with that, and then we put the 90, and then we came up with the remaining. So now you actually have as much information as possible. Okay. It turns out that this is an isosceles a right isosceles triangle, but that more more uh, later on that. Okay, but this is what I wanted you to do is to fill in as much information on this one as possible. <clears throat> Next one. I'm going to give you some time to do that yourselves. See what you have and put over as much information, as many numbers as you can possibly put on this side. As many angles, as many uh, side lengths as you possibly can given the triangle to the left okay so try that we are googling the answers <laughs> anyways uh all three sides are the same right you could i know this is too much work perhaps but you say hey they're if this is seven and they all have the markings and you could see the relationship between the markings and the actual side lengths and so you determine this is an equilateral triangle, it's symmetric. You should immediately know, okay, well, that means that all angles are equal. And so let's see what we can transfer over. If we cut this here, the 60, right, just split that in half, you have 30 there. You know this is 90. And you can either take this 60 and bring it over here or just realize, okay, this has to be 60 for all of it to add up to 180. Okay. This is 7. This is, what's the bottom one here? I can split that in half, correct? This is 3.5 centimeters. So now this is technically, uh, without doing a lot of, like formulas or calculations, you've basically filled out the entire, as much as you can about this new triangle, okay? All right, uh, here's one more thing that I'm gonna tell you. These formulas down here, you probably want to add these to your study sheet because they're not given, like you, I will give you ACs or tests or whatever that do not have these on them. So you want to add that to your 
formulas, right? Add to study sheet. I would, for, for me, I would not need the area of a triangle because I just know it, but some of you might need that, right? Area of parallelogram, take the base times the height. You should probably have a diagram just to know what's what. And watch this one. This one is something we're not very, we don't use very frequently, but a trapezoid looks like this, right? It's like a triangle cut off, like the tip of it has been cut off. So you're left with like the base of that triangle. So what you do is you add A and B, right? You add the length of the top and the length of the bottom. You add those, you hit equals, then you multiply by the height. Like that's why this is in brackets, okay? You need to add those two and then height, and then you divide your answer in half to get the area. So this is, this is for areas of those shapes, okay? Because it does come up from time to time. Let's keep going. A lot of this is review. Remember Pythagorean theorem? I hope so. I hope you're pretty good with uh, using Pythagorean theorem on page four, but it's basically stating that the hypotenuse squared is equal to leg squared plus leg squared, right? So there are two legs. And if this is your um, right triangle across from the 90, that's where the hypotenuse will be found, okay? Two cases to consider. If the hypotenuse is unknown, we use this one. Watch, uh, I would also say you should add that to your formula sheet. Hypotenuse, you find it by taking the square root of leg squared plus leg squared. That's it, that's the quickest way of doing that. If the leg is unknown, you take Right? If you want to find one of the legs, that leg will be found by going hypotenuse squared minus leg squared. Okay. This is on page four. This is the quickest way of doing that. Make sure you apply the root and calculate the inner the part that's inside the root first, then hit the root button at the very end to get these right. And I really hope that you're at the end, you're pretty good at uh, using the Pythagorean theorem because it's a very quick way to find a missing side. If you have a, it has to be a right triangle guys, okay? Don't be using this on a, a uh, triangle that doesn't have the 90 degree angle. So let's put this to the test here. <clears throat> Calculate the length of the missing side. Let's highlight the fact that they're right triangles. Okay. Highlight that little box on both of them. Otherwise, I'm afraid that you think this might work for everything. Look at this triangle, it's a right triangle. The side that's missing, it doesn't matter what letter it has. I don't, I don't stick with ABC, okay? I don't care. You just say this side that's missing, it's across the 90. This is the hypotenuse that's missing. Okay, call it the hypotenuse. So to find the hypotenuse, if this is the hypotenuse, it stands to reason that this is a leg and this is the other leg. And you have two legs there. So we root it, we will take the root of 7.6 squared plus 9.4 squared. I want you to show me what's inside the root, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and do that together. Grab your calculator. You should be able to punch this in and get that number. So we go 7.6 squared plus 9.4 squared. You get 146.12. I want you to use all decimals, all right? If the calculator has too many, write down the first two or three on paper and just go dot, 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 right? So 146.12. And then the last line is gonna be my hypotenuse. I have to take the root, right? So 
I press the root button, I hit equals, and it's 12.09 there. <clears throat> we are in centimeters. And it should be the longest side, but the hypotenuse is always the longest side. It should be within reason, because if you come down with 146.12, that's way too big considering the sides that you do have. Okay, So that's my answer. So when you're trying to find the hypotenuse, if you're on a construction site and your boss is like, hey, I want you to build this triangle with a right angle, um, and you obviously need to know how long to cut this piece, just quickly take the squares and add them of the sides, right? And then just take the square root, boom. You know, you have to cut it to 12.09 centimeters, and then you have a right triangle. Let's try one more here, and then I'll ask you to practice a few. <clears throat> Where's the hypotenuse here? It's across the 90. Which means, what are you missing? You're missing a leg. So I called x leg, so I'm just going to stick with it. Leg is going to be the root of the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. It's the minus part that is important. The squaring always happens, right? This is leg here as well. And so we just go ahead and figure out what that is. 17.8 squared minus 12.6 squared. That's 158.08. So leg is, uh, you know, just taking the root of that. Which is 12.57 inches. Uh, you could. I, I, the province always wants you to state your answers in two, to two decimals, so I kind of just stay, stay with that, stick with that. But yes, in the industry, you'd probably say, hey, everything is to one decimal. We'll go with one decimal for sure. Okay, so this is the Pythagorean theorem. One, you were missing your hypotenuse. The other one, you were missing your leg. The only difference is one is plus, one is uh, minus. Okay. I want you to practice right away. Go to page five and see is a little trickier but you should be able to do it. It requires you to do Pythagorean theorem twice. The answers are at the bottom of that page. If you look, just have to flip it upside down, you'll be able to see the answers. So try page five before we move on. I consider this review. Just make sure you're able to do it on your calculator. Okay, that's all I'm, I'm asking you to do here so that we don't have any hiccups. So try page five. And then we'll do more work in a bit. This is this is the meat and potatoes of today's uh, lesson, by the way. Classifying or working with triangles and then classifying them. <clears throat> so I guess all triangles would share the following, right? They have three sides, they're a closed figure, and the, the sum of interior angles always adds up to 180. That makes you a triangle. Uh, but classifying is where it's at today, okay? When you classify something, you are naming it, right? You're naming it and then putting the triangle in the proper category. This is on page six, okay? So when you're asked, when somebody asks you to classify, you want to give it a first and a last name. That's what I, I just came up with that, right? So um, I technically would say if we go by angle measure, that would be our first name. And there are three options there. A triangle can either be acute, it could be a right triangle, or it could be an obtuse triangle. And right is very easy to identify because it has to have the 90 degree angle. 
So if some, as, soon as, as soon as you see the 90 degree angle, boom, it's a right. The, the first name is right. Okay? Obtuse, one of the angle measures will be greater than 90. Okay? Obviously. And acute, they all have to be less than 90 for something to be acute. So that's the first name. Then the second name will be based on the side length. Okay? So this is the last name. To be honest, I don't really care if you mix them up. If you call the call a triangle by its last name and then the first name, I don't really like the province doesn't care. But here it is. You have three options. Equilateral, all three sides are the same. Isosceles, two or right? I saw so isosceles, two sides are uh, are equal or two angles are equal and then scalene all sides are different right scalene all sides and uh, no angles are the same right so that's something to keep in mind okay. on that note real quick here why can't a triangle have more than one obtuse angle And it, would, and it would violate this rule right here, that it has to be 180 every single time, okay? So let's, let's just say, let's just say there's angle A, angle B, and angle C, right? You've got three angles, just write that down. If you want one obtuse angle and another obtuse angle to be there, this already adds up to 182 degrees, right? Which is greater than 180. And this cannot be true. Okay. So I will put a question mark for C. It's like, well, what is C then? Because you're already past if you want to have the two obtuse angles, you're already past 180. So C can't really be anything anymore. Uh, it's it's already too too big, right? There's too many angles. All angles must be must have a sum of 180 degrees. No exceptions ever okay all right so seven you're gonna have to uh follow along on that one because now we're gonna start classifying sometimes it's super easy sometimes you're gonna have to do a little bit of work for that okay work Okay, these steps are made by me. You will not find them in any textbook, but I kind of just try to figure out a way to, to help you out in identifying, okay? So I will highlight the whole box for that reason, but you, you decide if you need to have this on your, on your study sheet because it does take up a significant amount of space. Granted, you can probably can't make this more compact okay but here you go steps to classify a triangle look for side lengths or angles that are given it could be markings or actual values that's the first step i would tell you to take number two can you calculate any missing sides or angles uh, you can use what's pt stand for pythagorean theorem sum of triangles equal to 180 and yes sine law cosine law worst case scenario you're going to use sine law cosine law it's not going to be very common but it could it could be necessary okay and then you draw your conclusion if all angles or sides are different it's either acute or obtuse scalene let's let's highlight that part it 
will be a scalene triangle for sure. If all sides or angles are different, it's for sure a scalene. You're going to have to figure out if it's acute or obtuse. You'll have to do some calculating. Um, two congruent sides or angles. It is for sure going to be an isosceles. Whether it's going to be acute or obtuse, that is up to you. That'll be based on the angles that are present. All angles congruent? What's that one? If all angles are congruent, it is for sure an equilateral. Always going to be acute since all angles are 60 degrees, right? So there's no, that basically only has a second name, like a last name or just one name, right? Equilateral. So if you, if you conclude that all angles are congruent all, or all sides are congruent, should I add that? I, I feel like I should have also said or all sides are congruent. Did I ever show you this symbol for being congruent and equal sign with a third wave? I never showed you that. That is congruent. Uh, let's write that down here somewhere. Equal sign with a third wave is congruent. Remember when they lied to us that like COVID was only going to stick around for two weeks, right? Remember that? It's like, oh, it's only two weeks and then we'll be back. It's like, yeah, right. <clears throat> and then there was the first wave, the second wave, the third wave, and many more waves after that, right? Anyways, um, so let's explore this a little bit more. To be honest, I don't I don't follow these to the T, but some of you need that like one, two, three uh, to kind of guide you, right? Remember, it's a guideline. So let's try that. Uh, here's here are a few triangles. Look at lengths or markings given. Okay. Do you notice that all three sides are different? Okay. Um, all sides are not congruent. Okay. Like all sides are just not congruent. They're all different. What can you conclude with that? Scalene. The scalene part. Right? You know this is this is scalene. Done. So one of the names is done. Now you need to focus on the angle. So boom. Angles. Right, there's one 90 degree angle. Sorry, it's a little cramped here. There's one 90 degree angle, so it's a right triangle. And here's my conclusion. So I, I, I usually do this. You get one mark for each correct name. So I'll say this is a right scalene triangle you're done it's a right because of that box it's scalene because all three sides are different however guys did you know that when if all three sides are different all three angles are also going to be different but right now it doesn't matter but I will show you where sometimes you're just going to know the angles and not the sides, and you can still conclude that it's a scalene triangle. Let's keep trying here. What about this one? So for markings, there are zero numbers here. What do these markings tell me? In this case, they tell me that all three angles are the same. All three angles are congruent. Equilateral, done. Yeah. You're done. That one is the easiest of them all. By the way, this triangle, I could have had three markings like that, and you would have come up with the exact same conclusion. All three sides are the same. 
therefore equilateral. It doesn't matter how you approach it. Angles also tell you something about the sides. And sides tell you a little something about the angles. Okay? No, you don't have to write acute. You can. It's always going to be acute because it's always 60, right? Yeah. Uh, maybe let's make a note. Acute may be, or may be omitted. The province is okay. Oops. If you just uh, write equilateral there. And I can see the problems be like explain, state and explain why an equilateral triangle can never be obtuse or something. It's like, well, since all angles are the same, 180 divided by 3 is 60, so there we go, can can be, right? Like I can see them asking the question. Just state what you know, right? Okay, let's keep going. Let's do less less uh, explaining here. If you had to, if you had to give this a first and a last name, what would you say? This is the first thing I would look at. That is a right. And then what about these two markings? Isosceles, yes. Done. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some highlighting here. This name. I came up because of these markings here. And the right came uh, after looking at that. Okay. There we go. I'll do the same thing up here if you allow me. Just going to go up here. This one came because of that. The scalene part came because of all three sides being different. How is that? Maybe that'll stick out more when you review later on, okay? D, I want you to take take two minutes to see if you could give the D a first and a last name based on what's there. So make like two lines like this. It's like, hey, what would you put in there? You know what? I think I need to specify here. Can we do this? Um, the first thing is either acute, right, or obtuse. Those are your options for the first name. And for the second, it's scalene, um, isosceles, or equilateral. Right? These are your, so this is the first category for your first name. This is your category for this last name. I really don't care if you if you put this front and this second that one i don't care but you have to have one from this category and one from this category every single time okay except for equilateral that one is okay okay so try to there's you know stuff guys you're able to find missing pieces and then give it a name a first and a last name okay go for it okay. I look at the numbers and the markings. I cannot draw conclusions just yet. Why not, Mr. Erickson? Well, there are no markings on the side lengths and there's only two angles given. You need to know more. So let's find this one here. We're gonna go 180 minus 30 minus 20. And that leaves you with 130 degrees. You put that in there. And that gives you, so you, you need to do a little bit more work in this case. Okay. okay, now you immediately, you can say, hey, it's obtuse. This is an obtuse triangle because of that one, ang uh, that one angle that's bigger than 90. So you've got the first name nailed. Now what, what else can you determine about the side lengths? Which one would this fit, guys? Would it scalene? Yes, but why is that? All angles are different, which tells us that all sides are different. So sometimes students are like, but what do angles have to do with sides? Everything, right? Everything, yeah. Yeah, 
if it says show work, uh, show work and, and just justify how you arrived to your answer, then yes, they would probably give you a mark for coming up with this. Sure. Yeah, it's fair now. It's fair now. Okay. Keep going. You know what? I think uh, I'm just going to stop here and ask you to try. You guys, it's not that hard if you think about it, but I need you to walk through each scenario and see if you can come up with the name and last name and get it right. Because these are easy marks if you if you put your if you practice enough. So I will tell you this. Goes to page 10. Yes, I was gonna tell you. All the way to page 10. Actually, some of you are gonna be done that as well. I'm I'm gonna ask you to go all, all the way to eleven. Page yes. It doesn't take that long, actually, if you, you know, if you, page 11 is tricky because I'm going backwards. I'm like, okay, draw me um, an obtuse scaling triangle. Draw me one. And so you have to make it happen. You can add uh, markings. You can add numbers. You can do whatever you want in that case, okay? So 8 to 11, I'll post the key. We'll, we'll call it a day for today, okay?